Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Amobi Okugo, host of Money Talks, a new podcast for my frugal athlete in partnership with Billion or Bust Media. Money Talks explores the world of business behind professional athletes. I speak with financial advisors, business managers, marketing and PR professionals who specialize in running the business of being a pro athlete. Tune into Money Talks on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find new episodes on BillionaireBustMedia.com and AFrugalAthlete.com. Again, BillionaireBustMedia.com or AFrugalAthlete.com. All right, good day, folks, and welcome to the Two Cents Podcast Buckeye Review Edition episode six. I am your host, Jay Richardson, and we are going to get a little bit into the Michigan State game. The Michigan State Spartans came to Ohio State for a night game. The Ohio State Buckeyes had a blackout, which I never understand because if everyone wears black, then to the guys on the field, it kind of seems like nobody's there. Um, I never I never really got blackouts, but whatever. Uh, this game was actually interesting um, for a bunch of reasons. One, Mark D'Antonio returns to Ohio State like he does every year since he's been coaching Michigan State. He's somebody that knows Ohio State very well as he was once the defensive coordinator on staff for a long time. Also, he is somebody that has, you guys recall back in 2012, 13, you know, um, and 10, Michigan State was the team that really gave us some problems and derailed some of the high hopes the Buckeyes had. In a lot of ways, Michigan State really is um, the real rival in the Big Ten the last decade or so for Ohio State just because of the dominance of Michigan. So this one, even though we look at Michigan State on paper and what they've done, um, you know, thus far this season and go, no way. You know, they, they've struggled with too many teams they should have beat, and then they lost to, you know, Colorado, Mel Tucker, and, who's another former Ohio State coach. There's no way they uh, they should be able to compete with the Buckeyes. But a part of everyone before this game, all at least football guys, always goes, Ooh, you just never know. It's Michigan State, you know. They sometimes find a way. All right, so that ties into the fact that they started this game off pretty well. Um, Michigan State's defense looked very, very good to start this game. They kept Justin Fields, uh, you know, when he wasn't getting pressured and kind of harassed, which I was impressed by all of the zone blitzing Michigan State did, all of the the kind of spot blitzing, overload blitzes, and our offensive line's, you know, first real struggles and inability to kind of pick up the protections and to be in the right spots. Fields was, you know, sacked three times this game, which is obviously uncharacteristic. He also threw, throw, thrown through, goodness, what is that word? He threw his first interception of the season. Everyone was waiting for that. Yes, he's human. Um, this one did not start great, actually. You, you, you thought after the first eight minutes of the game, this is not going to be, you know, this is going to be a game we're going to have to really have our backs against the wall. We're going to really have to grind it out. And Ryan Day, after the game, said this was the perfect test for the Buckeyes because, you know, um, they had those back against the wall moments. They had a few moments where they really had to have a gut check. And that's important. You don't want to see a team just breeze right through the entire season. Um, they're never ready for the playoffs when that happens. Look at Alabama last year. You know, it's one of those things you don't you want to have tests along the road to get your team prepared. This was, I'll say, is the perfect kind of test. Uh, and I know what Ryan Day meant when he said that. What he meant was, this is the kind of test that you know they're going to pass. They're better than this team. They should definitely win. But they're playing a team that's good enough that they can at least stress them a little bit and put them in a couple high leverage moments to force them, you know, to have to adapt. And it also forced the coaching staff to have to adapt, um, both protection scheme wise um, and uh, I think passing route wise because nothing was open early on, um, you know, and Ryan had to kind of go into his bag, get the crossing routes going, get behind that zone of Michigan State and make some things happen. So when you look at first downs, you know, Ohio State had 22, Michigan State had 18. You know, we're used to seeing Ohio State up in the 31 first downs right around there. So that right away was very telling. Still well over 500 yards of total offense, 529. 323 on the ground and I think this is kind of leading us into what is becoming this team's identity and is also just kind of uh, you know who this this Ohio State team is it's a team that plays defense and runs the football JK Dobbins at 126 at halftime um, still keeping his average of just above seven 
yards a game, and he just dominated, man. The kid, you know, uh, finished with uh, a well over 140-something yards rushing on similar amount of carries as last week, and he just continues to be productive. He broke a huge 67-yard run, showed his his kind of breakaway speed. Uh, you know, I'm still curious to see what kind of 40 he'll run to the combine, you know, this coming spring, but... I do love to watch him run away from defenders because that means we're going to score again. And that's what he did. And that really set the tone. Um, And while he was doing that on the other side of the ball, this Ohio State defense caused two turnovers early in the game, which I thought were critical because there was a moment in this game that it it, kind of could have gone sideways and it didn't. And I think specifically it's because Ohio State, our defense is just so legit. This is just another you know, test and another test that we passed that shows that we just have a super legit defense. I mean, these guys are fantastic. Jordan Fuller led the way with seven sacks from his safety position. But, you know, once again, Jay Sean Cornell showed up, had, had a lot of tackles, tackle for loss. Chase Young, goodness, had another sack, caused fumble. That's just who he is. Um, he's, once again, that's number eight for him this season. He's going to break that record. Just wait for it. You know, uh, Zach Harrison had a half sack, so that was fantastic to see. Also, you know, you saw great coverage from Okuda. You saw great coverage from Arnett. Uh, he really, really kind of showed up at this game, and everyone just seemed to want to get to the ball. Jordan Fuller also had a big interception. That was huge. Um, Malik Harrison was all over the place with tackles for loss and just – being very, very aggressive, which we love. He seems to be kind of like the wild man of the bunch for for the linebackers. Bear Browning had a huge sack late in the game. or uh, Actually, it was about third quarter. I think that was uh, tone setting and really got Michigan State's quarterback to the point where he didn't want to be out there anymore. You saw Ben Victor, who had a big drop early on in the game that would have kept our drive going, um, made up for it. You know, very next series. Had a huge catch um, that he took another 48 yards and dove into the end zone. They had to replay it to make sure he got in. But just the fact that he showed that kind of effort and athleticism, it just shows you what this kid is capable of. K.J. Hill, as always, led the way in receiving as far as receptions with seven. That was that was big. He was always the security blanket all day long whenever you know, uh, Justin felt harassed or just couldn't find anybody else. He knows he can go to KJ Hill. He's so good in between the numbers and around the hashes. He's going to make a great slot receiver in the NFL. And everyone, you know, like I keep saying, we'll, we'll, we'll remember this kid because he's just, he's really, really, really good. And I don't think he's gets rated properly because he's not a flashy player. He's just someone that runs fantastic routes, has great hands, and knows where the dead zones are of every um, coverage scheme. It's a, it's just kind of a, a knack that some guys have and some guys don't. You know, he just understands where to be and he understands his quarterback. And I think that's really, really important. Um, you know, our tight end record only had one reception, but he did a good job blocking actually, which I was impressed with. And he was able to, to kind of, you know, space the field for us in a way. Uh, other tight end, Farrell had it to catch for a touchdown, which I like. It seems like Ohio State's recommitted to using the tight ends, which is always good to see. Master T came in and had almost 100 yards, 90 on 14. He is somebody that we are going to be really, really excited to have next year when he kind of takes over um, as the every down back. But he's such a good complimentary back. He brings straight line power and explosiveness. And uh, just give him one more year in um, Coach Mick Moriarty's strength program, and he's going to be a monster. He already kind of is. A lot of guys talk about how strong he is and, um, you know, his, his straight line athleticism. So, this game, you know, obviously the final was 34-10. to 10. Um, Could have gotten out of hand in both ways. It could have been way closer, and then it also could have been way more of a blowout. So it was kind of interesting to watch how this game evolved start to finish. But another, row, or another test in the Big Ten. Um, it's nice to get past these guys with no problems because, you know, as an Ohio State fan, you just know Michigan State could always be an issue. Thankfully, they were not. I just I look forward to, to seeing how we react to Penn State and obviously to Wisconsin, because those are going to be the big ones this year. Um, those are going to be the ones that kind of set the tone. Michigan still didn't look great. Uh, they just, they've been struggling week in and week out, you know, uh, other than a blowout here or there with Rutgers. Uh, this this Michigan team is just, you know, I don't, I don't know what to expect. And we all know, you know, come late November when it's the last Big Ten game of the year before the championship, they're going to play us well and all that stuff. But I just don't see it this year. It'll be interesting. So, That is all for the week six review. Make sure we continue to like, subscribe, share, um, 
and feedback is always always happy to have that and please follow us at two cents show and myself that's where you can find us uh whether it be twitter or ig we're on both and thank you guys